I'm You've... nervy. But I'm all right. I'm, I'm, I'm up for it, but I'm nervy. No one Only enjoys telling a story like laughing. you. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I'm so... all right. I've got, I think I know what I'm going to say. Shh, <laughs> don't give it away. People are watching. This is all complete improv. <laughs> Hello to everybody at home watching Comedy Roulette. Thanks for joining us on this rainy Thursday night. Um, it's an exciting day today. We have Richard Gill, iconic audience and laugher from the open mic and general comedy circuit. He is doing his first shift as an actual comedian tonight. So we're very excited. We've got Tina Duib in the corner next to me. He can't tell that he's next to me, but he is. Um, brilliant stand-up comedian, hot chili eater, have I left anything out, TNN? Any other so skills you want to list? Those are my only, only skills. <laughs> Your only skills. <laughs> 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 and James Gill, the, arguably the king of stream comedy, always be comedy MC, booker extraordinaire, has really put on some of the best shows that I've seen, so it's an absolute joy to have him on mine. Um, it, it, that's, it's very kind of you. I'm, I'm, I do feel a little by, a bit like Dr. Frankenstein and Richard Gill is the monster tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is all your fault, I'm afraid. Can I be Tin and Gill for this evening? I'm feeling... <laughs> yeah, I think it's important that you are. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hello, brother. Just we Gil, or we're all Gil tonight. Uh, <laughs> the rules of the game are really simple. There are 30 balls in my bingo machine. Um, I'm going to roll them um, gently, because I was too gentle on the last few episodes and the balls didn't come out, and then I was too aggressive and the balls rolled away. So I think I found a happy medium. I have been practicing. Okay. When the ball comes out, it will correspond to one of the subjects on my um, very professional notepad where I scribbled them all down just now. And if you've got a story, a song, a bit of material, anything you want to talk about, you make a noise. So let's hear everyone's noises. Starting with you, Tina, what's your noise? Uh, I've, I've stolen my daughter's uh, doll's house and it's got bells on it. So, But there's also three oh, others. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's fabulous. That's brilliant. Richard Gill, don't feel intimidated it's by so Tiernan's big noise. Like, well, the only thing that's bigger, I think, than I am is McGuinness money tin. Okay. <laughs> so if I that. Nice, yeah. And nice. James, what have you got? I feel like a loser now. I've downloaded an app especially for this. <laughs> an absolute sad... Are we allowed to swear on this? Yeah, of course you are. Sad... Bastard. <laughs> uh, is it a bit teacher's pair or is it professional? Come on, bro. <laughs> I, I, mate, as soon as you shot that money tin, I thought, oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go get my daughter's piggy bank. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just impressed you both got money. How have you managed that? <laughs> These are pennies. These are pennies, believe me. Richard Gill's got a real job, TNN. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. Get out. You don't need this. Get out. He's got a very much job. Leave us the only thing we have left. Come on, Richard. We've got nothing. These are honestly pennies, I'm telling you. Meanwhile, there's like the washing machines making us sound like I've got a hostage behind me trying to get out of the small room. I don't know what's happening. Uh, <laughs> Right, let's let's spin the wheel of fortune. Well, right. that was some great crouch down uh, commando <laughs> walking behind you there. So yeah. done, Rich. So it wasn't done. that good, was it? Because you saw no, it. No, no, I mean, he tried his best, and that's all he asked for. Like an audience <laughs> member, a ninja. I mean, he does indulge a lot of my nonsense, so it's like I'm amazed he's still even trying. I've um, never met him. I like him already. <laughs> okay, so the first ball out is ball number 18, and that is online dating. Who's got an online dating story? It doesn't even have to be yours. You can tell someone else's. You see, the, the tricky thing is, because I've been with my wife for 11 years, online dating is a, a bullet that I have quite happily dodged. So I would feel slightly disingenuous buzzing in with a, an online dating story, given I, I, I admire everyone who does online dating, but it's uh, yeah, it's it's a train that left without me. I was online dating um, about eleven years ago, though. I was an early adopter of it when it was still quite sad. <laughs> that yeah, was a my wife and I. I mean, we, we didn't meet online, but oh, sorry, Tim, you go for it. I was just going to say, I, yeah, I've been with my wife for uh, ten years, but we we met on Guardian Soulmates, which now doesn't exist. Oh, <laughs> um, really? 
world is faultless. Yeah, we, no one's got a soul anymore. We've fucked it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I met my wife on there. We, we met mainly because, well, because we checked each other's profiles out and then we spent uh, just online showing each other other profiles that were worse and really awful. Amazing. And uh, <laughs> it was just like somebody going, I'm really OCD and I'm going to clean everything every day. So if you love me, you've got to like be covered in cellophane. And we'd be like, look at this dickhead. And um <laughs> It was terrible, but we bonded over uh, being really fucking horrible to other people. Isn't that nice? Oh, I just oh, saw in front of you. Oh, hello. Right. Hello. Oh, it's the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and why, why Guardian Soulmates, Tina? And do you just think you're better than everyone else? Or was that one of a portfolio of dating sites you were using at the time? That was, that was one of a portfolio. Uh, and, and I, I think, what was the other one? Something of fish? Plenty of fish. Plenty of fish. Oh, that was, that yeah. was trawling some... Deep uh, yeah, depths, that yeah. was. I got some scary... There's a child in one of the screens. I can't talk to you about this. <laughs> <laughs> Cover her ears. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but yeah, like 10 years ago, there was only like plenty of fish. There was the sort of what? The, that was the free one, wasn't it? Everybody could have a go at that. And um, uh, OK Cupid, which was where they really housed the strange fish. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> I used to constantly the, get... I'm not, I'm, oh, go on. I'm not saying that I want to have an affair, but what was that website that got into trouble? You know what I mean, don't you? There was the one in Australia. I'm just writing it down myself. <laughs> Is it Ash Ashley Madison or something like that? Yes, the, the that, was it, one? that was it. Yeah, that was it. And there was that. There was that. Carl Donnelly played it, didn't he, in one of his shows? Because they had yeah. they had their own jingle, and it was this Australian song, and it was something like. I want to meet someone who isn't my wife. That <laughs> <laughs> was literally the jingle of the. I mean, someone wrote that. Not that I've been thinking about that every day throughout <laughs> lockdown about having a fucker in Australia. I mean, you, you don't even need to sign up to things though now. You can just slide into Twitter DMs, can't you? Because my mum still hasn't forgiven Vernon K for his behaviour. It's been. De yeah. Probably about 10 years since he inappropriately messaged somebody. And I could text her now, Vernon Kay, and she would just come back and say, oh, that awful man. Like, she will not let it go. She's got... that, is, that is so true. I think there are certain people that the public just will never quite get over. So Gary, Gary Barlow could literally push an orphan out of the way of a bus. And as he was doing it, someone would walk past and go, pay your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so never, never, ever get well, James, the you would have been on a bus which is funded by public money and would he have continued <laughs> that bus? But even his orphan killing methods, he's not <laughs> that, of course he has to pay his tax. What an asshole. Yeah, I think he's on my mum's list as well. He's smug. Um my mum is not homophobic at all and she cause she hates um Philip Schofield. Like with a fiery passion, she thinks he's. Smug. I wondered where that was going then. She went through. <laughs> no, she went through this phase before he came out of texting the Sun newspapers readers corner about him, like all the time. She hated him, and she'd sign up as the Cardiff girls. Like she's like an old school troll, basically. So you need to get off the telly. I don't like him. But when he came out, she texted me, and she loves to be the first celebrity news. She texted me, Philip Schofield's gay. Then then the follow up message, still an asshole though. So he's gone up in her estimation for being gay. <laughs> She's right. <laughs> He's actually climbed the rug of the ladder in my mum's eyes, but still an asshole. No, I love that. That's, so, that's like the the absolute most accepting that he's an asshole, regardless of what yeah. his sexuality is. And I think that's beautiful. He can do what he wants, but he's not going to change your minds on that. Uh, <laughs> she's a Damn. brilliant woman, my mum, in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going again. I'm going again. I've gone too hard. Like ah. I think the cat's eaten one of these, but I don't know which one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, and it is number 12, looking after children. Now, I hope at least oh, two of you have got something for this. Does anyone, I mean, I can buzz this all day long. Does anyone want to go first? Mate, I just... I'll, I'll join in after you, mate. Yeah, we've got time. We can go through every single one, if, only if they're bangers, though. If it's just non-anecdotes, I don't want to hear it. No. Well, I just, I, I, my daughter turned two just before lockdown. Um, and it's been like living with the enemy, basically. She, 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 I mean, within the first week, we just managed to get some food in and she took a bite out of every bit of fruit in the bowl and then <laughs> left it there and it all went off. And it like, so funny, dickhead. like, we need to survive. And this is what you're doing. Like, she's constantly like l throwing things down the stairs or breaking on things we need. And it, and it feels like one of those films where there's like a hero and at the end they discover their friend is a Nazi or something and they were spy all along. <laughs> 
and we're stuck with that. Um, but also, we've been we decided to potty train her, and uh, because because you should that, that is the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I bet that's true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, we but, decided but to potty train it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you say that, but nappies are way more convenient. I mean, I definitely, if they did, they do do adult nappies, but like, socially you know, limiting. Long journeys, it'd be brilliant. <laughs> yourself. Anyway, all I'm saying is, we thought it would, it added to the, the shitness of everything. In, uh, but specifically, one day where she ran towards me, go, Dad, I need a poo. And as I picked her up, she either pooed mid lift or had just done it before I picked her up and I managed to plant my bare left foot straight into what looked like a grown man's hefty turd and uh, <laughs> and it was one of the worst feelings I've ever had in my life and uh, I, I keeled over sideways because I didn't want to tread the poo everywhere so I was screaming my foot's can't poo on it and my wife didn't talk she was laughing so hard she couldn't breathe and, uh, and now all that people talks about every day is daddy stepped in poo. Yes, because of you. <laughs> you. Yeah, you did the poo. You don't get to laugh at that. <laughs> she sounds great. Is she available? She's, she's, she's very way funnier than me. Way, way funnier than me. <laughs> you have to cut that foot off now. It's been tarnished. <laughs> it's, I, I, it, the sensation is possibly one of the worst things I've ever, I've ever felt. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, generally it's 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 brilliant and awful, isn't it? I, I sort of I like the fact that she has no idea what's going on, and I hate the fact that I have to look after it every day. I'm basically just living on coffee uh, and hot sauce. That's all I do. I just <laughs> and, and coffee's meant to keep you awake, but it doesn't. It just makes me into shit unexpectedly. Yeah, I was going to say they are digestively <laughs> interesting choices. That's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a way of life. Anyway, I, I, I feel I should have this over. I, uh, James, you've got. Yeah. No, but, I mean, to be honest with you, I think we're living parallel lives. That, that my, you know, the the criticism I got pre lockdown was not being home enough and not being with the family enough. And now we're in <laughs> July. I think my two girls and my wife collectively just want me to fuck off back to work forever. <laughs> no, <laughs> Daddy's back. <laughs> <laughs> They just I, need a break. Uh, Richard, you, you shook your moneymaker as well, didn't you? I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was very, very proud and pleased to take my niece to a first ever comedy gig, which was always the comedy in January. And uh, I said to her, I said, now, now you'll be sitting on the front row with me, because I normally sit on the front row. And they norm and the comedians normally have a right go at me, which I love. But Humble of course, I didn't bank, and Richard Gill. I didn't I didn't bank on uh Maisie Adam targeting my niece who sat there sheepishly taking all this shit from her. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh my god, no, this is horrible. And I turned to her and I said, What did you think of it? She said, Oh Uncle Richard she said, I absolutely loved it. And she went to meet her afterwards and Apologies and all the rest. Aww. It was fantastic, nice. absolutely fantastic night. So that was great. That was a highlight for me. Not nothing makes Richard more proud than uh, a comedian spending the first couple of minutes of their set literally annihilating him. It's uh... <laughs> it's a, it's a weird kink, but we like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not the way it goes. <laughs> do, do you ever, do you ever I don't know what, I don't know like what it is. I, I don't know. I, I think it's because I'm. I'm projecting such utter joy from being there. It just fuels everything. It's great. They know it's that you're. The they know that you're on side. So they know that if they take the Mickey out of you, you're in on the joke. Yeah. And so there's no chance of it going sour. It's all done in the right spirit, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's why I love it. I mean, uh, I spend well, one, one day you just the running with a gun. Just leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I stuck there. Yeah, like my, my, my dad. Uh, I had to ban my dad from coming to gigs quite some years ago because he was in the audience. I won't. I won't say which comedian was on, but it was an older comedian. And the comedian pointed to him at one point and said, "Oh, you're an old guy like me." And my dad went, "No, I'm not." And he went, "Oh, but you look older." He said, "No, I've just aged rapidly listening to your shit." <laughs> and, yeah, the comedian is quite a good headliner. Just fucking silence. And I had to ban my. It's like you can't come again. You're not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> that is up. That's that. That's like the old plastic Les Dawson line where the punter went up to him and he went, "Do you mind if I give you a bit of advice?" He said, "No, what is it?" He said, "I think you did." <laughs> <laughs> that's not advice. That's unsolicited feedback. <laughs> well, 
he knew he had an act. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Tom, Tom Rosenthal at Edinburgh one year said something to a gentleman on the front row about, I think it was like, something like, when did you realise you were straight or something like that? And, my, and it was my dad and he said, when I started washing my willy too quickly in the bath. And Tom, the, the, the gig... People laugh that hard that Tom had to stop the gig. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so then I realised it was my dad. And then I know that my dad's quip made it into Tom's tour show because it was just such a fucking unusual thing to say. But uh, <laughs> I'm with Tim, and those moments where you're just dying of shame at, you know, the parents. Speaking of uh, kids dying of shame at the parents, right, you're going to have to stay in bed. <laughs> so she's got good timing. <laughs> what's it? What's it? Best joke? Have you got a joke? Oh. You have. Do you want to tell a joke? Okay. What do you want to do? Anything? Go to bed. Go to bed. All right. <laughs> <laughs> There we go, oh, Tina, and that's a secret. Drag your child in in front of a Zoom call, ask them to tell a joke. They'll go to bed willingly. You can take it, it and run it with it. <laughs> Is it a risk, it's though? Because I've not. I've only been to one Fringe as an audience member, and it was over bank holiday weekend, so it was bedlam. Is there a risk when you're doing a show that there's going to be a comedian in the audience that's going to best a joke? Or is there, like, a code oh, yeah. of conduct where you don't do that? What's the What's the protocol? Yeah, it's a code of most comedians wouldn't, I think. We will we, we'll respect each other vaguely to uh, not do that, I think, generally. Unless you've got a really good... T- I mean, I can't think of anyone that's been heckled by a comic unless the comic yeah. has been picked on them not knowing. There might, there, there might, there might well be in the audience. I, I saw uh, Nick Miller and um, Jimmy Cricket do Half Hour Each and Tim Vine and um, Roy Walker and everybody was in the back making notes and stuff. Amazing. Yeah, you, you you do get that because you get one-off specials and whatever. But um, I, 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 I was there one year and um, I can't remember the comic's name, but um, he bounded on and he, hello, everybody. And there was three people in the audience. There was me, my mate who was a reviewer, and a drunken Scott in the front row. And he went, oh, mate, he said, I'm really sorry, you know, you come along, come along, I'll buy you all a drink, there's only three in the crowd, and the Scott the drunk in the front row went, no, I've paid me six pound, I want the show, and he had to do it. So. <laughs> 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 and, he, and, you know, the show had to go on, I suppose. <laughs> well, apparently that day it very much did. <laughs> yeah. Brutal. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'm going, I'm doing it again, I'm rolling the ball. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, you let him drop. It goes into this little... It's boring. Um, I don't know why I started that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's in lockdown. Everything is exciting. Like, it's it's not as exciting as I think it is. So. Over, that is probably the most exciting thing anyone has seen for some time. <laughs> I love it when the balls drop. Yeah, I want to say. the end of that. Um... I don't know why you're bad that. <laughs> okay, so it's number three. The weirdest situation you've ever found yourself in. Now, this is broad. Oh. Um, okay. I've got one. Okay. But it's a bit of a long. It's a bit of a long. I'll try trim it down. So uh, I was warming up for Richard. I've told Richard this. I was once warming up for John Bishop at the Lyceum Theatre. It was a, it was a Christmas special, and I'd been told that I wouldn't need to do crowd work, right? Because John was ready to come on, and we recorded this just before Christmas. This was probably about four or five years ago. Everyone in the theatre had a Santa hat on, so it felt very Christmassy. And I was told you just have to do maybe a minute tops. So I go on there and uh, I do my you know, usual spiel and I'm looking for John Bishop and he's not on yet. So I have to keep going, do a bit more, you know, hello, look, yeah, are you ready? You know, still nothing, keep going. And then there's a guy on the third row, large gentleman, big white beard, red face, and he's got the Santa hat on, and I can hear in my head, you won't need to do crowd work. But then I'm also thinking, <laughs> that's not the Christmas. I don't talk to this guy, I am not doing my job. So I go into the crowd, and I ask this guy to stand up, and I said, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from the front pole, from the, from the north pole, it's Santa. And with my hand to God, the crowd disproportionately loses its shit. <laughs> it, it <obviously laughs> And so I came up on stage, and there's 2,100 people, and we all chant, Santa, Santa. And I'm thinking, this is this might be the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. And 
whenever I warm up for John, whenever I do a good job, you get the you know you get the beautiful big bishop pearly whites, and I'm thinking I'm getting the in the pearly whites tonight, baby. And I say, uh, what if you got a message for for Christmas? And he, he cracks that horrible line about coming up your chimney, which means that I can do the <gasps> Santa, you know, and it's it's all lovely. And then the floor manager comes on, right? John's ready, and I'm like, this is life isn't getting any better than this. So I says, ladies and gentlemen, as he sits back down, let's hear it for Santa. Santa, Santa, are you ready for John? Yeah, he's on stage. It's John Bishop. Now I'm not. I'm not just expecting the smile. I'm expecting John to pick me up like Patrick Swayze in Dirty Dancing. This is like the the best thing ever. But John isn't walking onto the stage. John is stood side of stage. I'm thinking this is odd. And not only is he not smiling, he looks quite cross. So I walk up to him, like wondering why I'm not getting hugged. And he looks in the eyes and goes, "You've just ruined the ending to the John Bishop Christmas show." <laughs> oh no! no. And so I've gone from I've gone from hero to zero like that. And I was like, "What?" And he goes, "He was so obviously a plant." <laughs> oh, no. John, this is this is I mean, this is a line that I, I, I still wince at. He goes, "How many people do you know who look like that?" And in a panic, I went, <laughs> "They exist." <laughs> so he goes. He goes. He goes, <laughs> we're going to have to rewrite the whole ending to the Christmas show. And I'm like, oh, my God. He goes, what was supposed to happen was a sleigh was going to come down. Santa comes out of the crowd. I get in the sleigh with him. We wave. And the sleigh goes off. So I'm like, I am. Oh, sorry. And he does that thing that you'd, a disappointed dad would do. And he just looks at me, shakes his head, and walks onto the stage, right? So the place goes wild. It's, you know, it's John Bishop. And he goes, welcome to the John Bishop Christmas show. Huge cheer. Now, in terms of uh, the weirdest situation, this, what happened now, is the weirdest. Because then he goes, I'm going to tell you what, James, our warm-up has just done. And he then told the story of me ruining. And so I'm stood at the side of stage, like, p- pinching myself. I'm going to wake up from this nightmare. And um, he goes, tell you what, let's get James on to explain the story. <laughs> So I go, the floor manager goes, you better go on. So I go on there, huge cheer from the crowd. John puts his arm around me, tells the story. I can't even look. So I bury my face in John's alpha male pectoral muscles. Jay, Jay, Jay. Wait, that's Jay, 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 Jay. Jay. Sorry, She's sorry, just sorry, blown sorry. the punchline wide open. Oh, no. <laughs> this is her... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is how so, John um... Bishop felt when James Gill pointed out Father Christmas. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> so, then, so then he goes, he goes, uh... he gets on, oh, oh my God. And then John goes, oh, James, before you go, there's just one more thing. And I look up and then he flashes the Bishop pearly whites and he goes, I'm just pulling your leg. He's not even a plant. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so John, John being John, and, and I'm not just saying this, like, you know, top five greatest humans that I, I will ever meet. I, I love him so much. John being John, he goes, let's hear it for James. So I get, you know, I, I, you know, I get the cheer. And uh, his makeup girl comes over and she goes, you know, uh, his makeup girl comes over and goes, you know what, you should get your own back. And I went, you know what, we'll leave it at 1 0. I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> But the great, the great thing about John, though, is that he's stood at the side watching this, and he's thinking, as I'm on there, he's thinking, right, Kylie Minogue needs to be on at half nine. Sarah Millican needs to be on at quarter past nine. Ollie Mers needs to be on at... And he goes, we, he's thinking, we probably should stick to the very tight schedule. <laughs> and or yes. I could spend <laughs> ten minutes winding James <laughs> But, I mean, yeah, that... I mean, that that's probably the most weird thing that's, that will, will ever happen to me in my life. That was a roller coaster. Um, yeah, God bless, God bless <laughs> John. Yeah. I've, I've, I've got one. Go on then. Go on, Richard. I, I, when I, um, I, my, my hometown is Carlisle, and the first job I ever had was at Tesco's. And that was my uh, first I, job. Um, I, I, yeah, first ever job was in Tesco's. And I um, normally I was on the uh, shelf stacking, but this particular day I was on the compactor, and uh, I pushed the cardboard into the down into the compactor, and I fell down it, and I'm hanging on like Indiana Jones onto the top as this thing's trying to eat me up. 
And the time he comes over, he's like, well, Mr. Gill, please go to pet food, please. He's needed urgently. I can't! <laughs> what was the emergency <laughs> in pet food, though? So I, I had to be winched <laughs> out, and then I got to, and then I, 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 it was awful. Just a disaster. That was very weird. Like fire brigade yeah. level of winching, or? <laughs> Let me I understand. Got out, but the cardboard, <laughs> never, it was just incredibly, just embarrassing. It's amazing. Awful, but very funny. Mm, damn, <laughs> those are good. Those are very good. Uh, I'll, I'll press. Um... <clears throat> Thank you for I, observing uh... the rules. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I've got a. Uh, you know, it's the only way to get any sense of time in this current period of uh, life. I've got to at least divide by some rules. You know, work out what day it is. Um, I've got well, I've got two, but w one is one that lots of people know, which is that Gillian Anderson shaved my back with hummus. Um, yeah. That was for uh, Mark Watson's twenty-five hour show. And uh, did oh, you volunteer for that specific thing? How they, I I know it happened, but I need to understand the sequence leading up to it. Sure. Well, I'll do it quickly because that one's quite well, like people know that one. But I've, I've got uh, who? One, who? Got I, I mean, who do you think you are, Beyonce? I. <laughs> well, I was, okay, so it's a 27 hour show. I, my challenge for it, among other things, was one was that I thought I'd wear 27 dresses, a different dress every hour. And then also, I was going to have 27 really horrible things or weird things happen to me. Punishments, as Mark called them. So yeah, I got like yeah. hit in the face with a fish. Um, I had to eat a cup of flour. Um, I had to, um, oh, I had to no. dip my balls into a bowl of icy water. There was some really <laughs> horrible things, actually. And, um, I had to do press ups with John Robertson with a bike on his back, on my back. And also, there's a horrible thing. Mark was horrible to me. Anyway, he's always horrible to me. And, um, <laughs> he is. And, and I was simply, one of them was I was in their dress on stage, and Gillian Anderson had turned up to guest. Um, she'd been kind of popped in to guest uh, and appear and just sort of help out and try and help raise money because we were raising money for Comic Relief. And, um, and she saw me. And she just pointed at him and said, I want to shave his back. So I was in quite a low-cut dress so at the time. it was Gillian Anderson's idea? It was Gillian Anderson's idea. And then she crowdsourced from the audience at the Pleasance both a razor and then they couldn't find any shame cream, so she got some hummus. <laughs> no um, way. And I... And I, <laughs> I <stood laughs> oh, yeah. dress, <laughs> and like 15-year-old me was like, would have been so confused because I loved her so much. And yet this <laughs> was the scenario I imagine meeting her in at all. And then they found some soap, so they didn't swap the hummus for soap. But my back was sore for about uh, a week. Uh, it was horrible. <laughs> oh, my um, gosh. That's weird situation one. The other weird situation <laughs> was quite some time ago um, I, when I didn't know, like, uh, anything about news. Um, I got asked to go on Russia Today to do some jokes about current topics. And I thought, brilliant. So I write, and it paid, basically. It paid. I thought, brilliant, <laughs> I'll do it. And one of the topics was Julian son. So I, I put some jokes together. He'd just been, he'd just gone to the Ecuadorian embassy. So I wrote a few gags that I could think of. And I turned up and they were like, great, okay, you're going into this room. I get put in a room with an earpiece and suddenly before I know, I'm talking to an international correspondent and they're, t they're saying I'm a political analyst and they wanted me to discuss what happened to Assange very, very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, no! Know, but, no, that's you know, like a nightmare where you're naked taking through. an exam. No, that didn't uh, happen to you. Yeah, uh, uh, it's it's like that guy Goma thing, and and so I didn't know what to say, and I sort of threw out my. I can't even remember my. Jokes. They, were shit. they were really shit jokes, and and the woman that interviewed me was going. So you I don't committed really to the material. <laughs> his situation, and I just sort of went, oh, I don't know, I don't think he's very nice, and maybe he's, uh, anyway, and then I sort of ran out after I'd been finished. And then they transcribed it or put it on their main website as a news article. And I got trolled for about a year by Julian Assange fans. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't get paid. So uh, it was terrible. Terrible. Situation. That's amazing. <laughs> that is brilliant. So were you, were you trying to weep the gags in then? I didn't have anything else to say. You could I, 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 didn't anything, uh, I didn't know anything about the situation other than that uh, he may or may not have uh, done a crime and was hiding from police. And uh, and I, you know, so <laughs> it was it was probably like yeah, guy Goma, that thing of just turned yeah. up going, I don't know what I meant to say here. I thought I was going to talk about some sort of like hilarious story about a dog and something else, and then a bit on Julius Edge. Was um, that a translation issue? How did you get that gig? Incredible. <laughs> I have no idea. I never never responded to any of their emails ever again. <laughs> <laughs> You're on some kind of list at the Kremlin. <laughs> 
good man, good man. <laughs> He's absolutely brilliant. Was there a moment where you're thinking, I, I just need to run away? <laughs> yeah, I really thought about bolting it. Uh, and then there's that weird thing of going, I'm on live TV. I can't, I don't know if running away will make this worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't work out yeah. Terrible. Wow. Terrible. That's amazing. That's extraordinary. Yeah. Oh, what a brilliant story. This is why I love doing this. <laughs> Right, I'm going again, I'm going again. <laughs> Who knows where we'll go next? Oh, see, it happens again. Ah. We could just... You need some sort of ball we, catching we should, uh, system. We could just guess, I suppose. What do we think it is? Pick a number between one and 30. <laughs> Richard, Richard Gill, this is your first comedy effort. Pick a number. Um, Don't look at the... Number list. 10. Siblings. Who's got a brother or sister? <laughs> yeah. Yes. And who's got a funny story about them? That's the second part of that. <laughs> uh, my my brother uh, once uh, threw a dart in my leg on Thursday. <laughs> wow. <Ooh. laughs> That's I not very nice. He never do that, and he did. Oh, that's oh, just yeah. assault. That's I not was funny. Being, I was being about uh, 12, something like that, 12, 13. Wow. And, he's, wow. and he's six years older than me. We were playing darts and we were bored in, on, on, in the shed. Uh, we've got a, a, an old shed in Cala. We were playing darts. And he turned and, 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 it, and I said to him, you'll never throw a dart in my leg. You'll never do it. <laughs> And I was in agony. So, yeah. That, that, to be, that, to be fair, in, in Carlisle, that is the height of affection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like saying I love you. Well, well, the main reason well. for siblings to exist is to understand what levels of uh, violence can get to before they're unacceptable without you being arrested. Like, is it the only people in the world that you can absolutely kick the shit out of without he, someone calling the police. Yeah, he is, brilliant. He is a very dear brother, but um, uh, um, I was, we were all once sitting on a roof, and uh, I, I was terrified of heights. I would be about seven. And uh, he he said to me he was going to catch me, and he missed. And, uh, and yeah, so... I but, love this. We are, we, we, we are very close. As He's a very dear older. brother, so I'm going to sell him down the river with some very violent stories of when he assaulted me. <laughs> My favourite... My favourite story about Richard's family. I hope he doesn't mind me. Ta if he doesn't mind me saying this, but Richard once came up to me at Always Be Comedy and he said, "Oh, you know, ter terrible news. My auntie's." Yeah. Well, I said, "Oh, Rich, that's that's awful. You know, thoughts are with you." Yeah. And then a couple of weeks later, he came up to me and he goes, "Oh, tragic news. My auntie's died." And I said, "Rich, that is so sad. I'm I'm so sorry." And then two weeks later, he had a real spring in his step and he came up to me and he went. I've just found out I've been given a house. <laughs> <laughs> that is a story in three parts. <laughs> that's amazing. That's the 21st yeah. century in a nutshell. That is, well, that's what's happened to the housing market in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, relatives dead. Hooray, I don't have to rent. That is <laughs> Richard yeah. Gill, property magnate. <laughs> I'm so grateful, I really am. Oh. <laughs> God, mate, God bless you. If anyone, I'll tell you what, mate, if anyone, if anyone I've ever met in my entire life deserves to be given a free house, it's you, my friend. I can, I can buy that. I've been at some of the nights you sat through. I've hosted them. Um. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I've, had some, I, 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 I've, I've had some amazing... Um, Comedy experiences, I really have. I um, you've had, a, I mean, you've. Had, I know you're still having a life, but you've had a great, you've had a great life, haven't you? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been watching comedy, as I say, for forty-five years now. Wow, that's and, a new show. Uh, I've seen over seven hundred comedians live. It's Mark Watson's latest <laughs> venture, forty-five years show. Yeah. <laughs> There was one time at the Tommy Field. Um, there's like a, a, a fire exit where the comedians hang out without, you know, without people uh, coming over to them. And uh, apart from Richard, obviously. And there was uh, Brett Goldstein, Harry Hill, and Nick Helm. And oh, this... <laughs> Richard, <laughs> Richard goes over to Brett Goldstein. He goes, Brett, can I just say, 
I've been a fan of yours ever since you started. I've come and seen every Edinburgh show you've ever done. I'm, I'm just a huge fan. Of, I think you're terrific. And Brett was like, oh, wow, thanks. Harry Hill, you, to me, you're a hero. You're an icon. I've supported you ever since you broke through. Late 80s, early 90s. I've always been there. I love you. Harry, oh, thanks very much. Turns to Nick Helm. Never seen you before. <laughs> So the the abuse. Oh my god! In the act. Oh, that was extraordinary. Oh my god! So, so that was like before the, the show. Yeah. It was extraordinary. And I, I sat oh. there and took it, and I thought, "This has got to be an act. What have I done? What have I said?" <laughs> you brought it on yourself. <laughs> I'm Richard Gill. I've seen over 500 acts. Not you, though. Not you, no. Well, I hadn't at the time, but, he, but I, um, I, I, um, I went to see him on tour last year in St Albans, and he was standing outside a Weatherspoons, this Nick Helm, uh, smoking a cigarette, and I never told him I was going to go and, and um, say hello. And he turned up and he looked at me, I'm bloody hell, he said, what are you doing here? I said, well, I'm coming to see you. He said, well, you can come and show me where the venue is, because I have no idea. <laughs> so well, that, Rich, I would say that moment was the start of a beautiful friendship, wasn't it? Genuine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a he had a drink with me afterwards and um, started talking about his favourite comedians, and he was going way back the seventies, and it was fantastic. Really good bloke, you know, and a great. And who, who would have who yeah. would have thought that it would have all started with him calling you the c word, screaming the c word? <laughs> <and, laughs> Well, knowing I was from Carlisle. Carlisle, yeah. <laughs> Mate, write that down. Write it down. <laughs> How <laughs> dare you? Sorry. But... <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, Eric, we've one got... Of my yeah. now. We've got time for one more. Unbelievably, the time's just gone, isn't it? Um... Oh, I'm just getting into the groove here. I know. Yeah? One more. Right, go on then. Can't read my own handwriting. Um, <laughs> um, a thing you love that no one else understands. So was Nick Hell? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would do. What have I written here? Yeah. Richard made notes. He's my star people. Yeah, yeah, oh yes. But he yes. can't speak unless he makes the noise. And then, then we Yes, uh, it, it. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm not. Uh, no, no, you're not speaking goes. to it. You make your noise. This goes. <laughs> Richard Gill, do you have something for me? <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, this this goes way back to um, I to old dial up IT. Uh, uh, um, I used to have a time machine. We called time machines, computers, and uh, my dad, God bless his soul, um, was uh, really keen on getting a uh, getting a computer. So we got him one, and he had the same one as mine. And I taught him how to switch it on and do all the stuff and everything. And he kept looking at me blankly as though he was frustrated and all the rest of it. And that's really grown um, since I've had my first computer because uh, I do get stressed out with them, as was proven at Always Be Comedy last few, last week with, with the sound. Um, uh, but um, uh, um, I do persevere with them, so... That's that's the that's the story, uh, but um, you know I don't think it's necessarily funny, but I do get stressed with it. It's just information. <laughs> that's fine. Well, Rick, Rick, I mean that was that was for, on it's a Tuesday night. Price, when I mean, you I... rang me up, that was amazing. You're in, you're in stereo. <laughs> oh, bless, <laughs> bless your to, heart. I had to do this, didn't I? So I was way yeah. back here, and you were all. I don't know what Rachel Paris and. Uh, uh, Rachel Paris, Marcus Briggs, stock thought, but I think they could still hear me. But I was, I, I was panicking because my sound was all off on my computer. They probably just thought you were attention seeking, Richard, <laughs> making it all about you. I don't think why. <laughs> no, no one's watching Richard. He wants to do a song. He's making it about him. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Sort of incorporate. You need to like. Get a background so there's like two lines 
coming out of the screen towards you. So it looks like you're on a road very far away. <laughs> you can totally yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, well, it is. I mean, I mean, it's extraordinary that over the last three months we have had to master IT to talk to everybody. You know, and my famous master quote, Jane. I'm not convinced I've mastered it. <laughs> my, my, my famous quote, it's better than nothing, is... Oh, my God. That, that is true, because other, the first two or three always be comedies that they did online. They have a front row where they laugh, and, of course, I laugh, and, and it's audio and everything, but the first two or three were in silence. So I was sitting there laughing at walls and I thought I was going to be taken away because no, 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 nobody could hear what I was saying, you know. So ridiculous. The front row but, is a um, lot of pressure, Richard, because you well, sort of, you, know, you, you, you coerced me into doing it that time and then my McDonald's arrived halfway through, but nobody was eating or getting a drink or going to the toilet. They were all just intensely watching and laughing. So I had to watch my McDonald's go cold over the last half hour of the show. <laughs> like... Occasionally, it looked like there were tears in my eyes. Um, of course. Like, why? How does well, no one need a wee, James? What do you do to these audiences? They're just like. Well, well, well Richard's, oh, Richard's comment about They're better incredible. than nothing. Richard's comment. Richard's comment about better than nothing was uh, we got to the end of the night, and I've got such a soft spot for these online nights. So I, I asked the crowd. I said, "What do you prefer, the the, the physical nights or these online nights?" And I thought it was going to be fifty fifty. And everyone, all the front row were shouting, physical, physical, physical. The chat, everyone was physical, physical, physical. And I was like a bit crestfallen. Yeah. And then, oh. Richard, and then Richard Gill goes, he goes, James, the online nights are better. And so I was like, oh, you legend, thank you. But Richard hadn't finished speaking and he went, the nothing. <laughs> That's that comedy timing we're trying to hide out of him. It was just a phrase, but I think he knew what I meant. <laughs> so that's a great, it's a great tagline for a club. Better, better. than nothing. That's, that's, that's a poster. Know. That's a poster quote. That's a pull quote right there. Better, dot, 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 than nothing. Better than nothing. There are definitely some nights out where you'd prefer nothing. So I think it's... it's uh, Sometimes it's a photo <laughs> finish, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's technically a positive. You're, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> what, a, what a note to finish on. Um, <laughs> I'm, any... so, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry about the four-year-old apologising enough. Hmm? That's right. It's very BBC. Uh, it's like you're being interviewed by the BBC. You did a very good job. I loved it's, it, it, yeah. It's, uh, yes. What, what, you, what you didn't... Well, I, I'll hold my yeah. hands up. What, what, what you didn't see was one time I went, go back to bed, and she fell over. Oh. Now, if you'd seen that, it, look, it would have looked like I was going to have to hand myself into the police so um that was going to be some kind of viral content though james that that it was selfish of you to not share that with us <laughs> oh man yeah, i sorry, need viewers <laughs> that that for me. Me, james this is how i'll uh you don't go to bed i'm gonna push you over <laughs> <laughs> that's what i, I, I heard promise, that's what i heard i promise i didn't push it, it looked like it but I, I promise <laughs> why did i share that but you did. That is the beauty of being in your house and feeling safe. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for doing this. It's been so much fun. Um, I Thank really so appreciate much. it. Thank you. I've loved it. Thank you all for coming. Next week, um, we have Sarah Keyword, Catherine Bohart and Hannah Dunleavy. So it's going to be a bit of a girls' night. Right. So come back and watch that, people out there. And um, have a lovely evening.